Uh, <clears throat> this, is a, this is a type of problem that uh, I've usually gone over in the way that I'm going to teach it uh, for this time. And the reason why is, you know, I, I was taught this way, and I know a lot of you are kind of familiar with it, um, but a lot of times it, um, it's not always going to work for all of your more deeper problems. And it's not, it's not really mean it's not always going to work. It's always going to work, but a lot of times it doesn't always simplify things. But it's a great example to go through, and you know it's just always an extra weapon that you can always use to tackle a problem when you have fractions. So, um, you know, what we're really practicing with this is we're really practicing, you know, undoing your op your operations and using the inverse operation. And a fraction, you know, we also need to keep on practicing those operations with fractions. That's why I haven't really gone into this. However, we're at that point now where we've gone over it enough that you guys should know those inverse operations. And if you kind of want to have a shortcut, here's a good shortcut. Whenever I have a fraction, I can get rid of that fraction by multiplying every single term by the denominator. So what that means is if I multiply everything by three, what happens is I have to multiply this three times everything. Oh, it's going in there. Well, these two threes cancel out. So I'm left with 2g. 3 times 6 is a positive 18 equals 3 times 12, which is 36. Now I have a problem that I can solve without, um, without having to use any fractions. So I can subtract 18, and I'm left with 2g is equal to 18 divided by 2 and g is equal to 9. And so there you go. So this is a great shortcut to use when you see fractions and you don't want to deal with fraction notation. Just simply multiply it uh, by one of your denominators or make sure your uh, most common denominator and uh, you'll get rid of it.